Welcome back to my channel, this is Vitruvian Physique and welcome to Ascension Episode 4. That's right, get ready for exciting stuff happening right now, oh my god! Ah. I wanted to actually talk about two topics, it's almost like two videos in one. The first topic is going to be a very basic full day of eating, what the macro breakdown is, the calorie breakdown is, uh, my cardio, pretty much anything which affects your body composition, we are going to explain and analyze. And then guys, the second half of the video, we are actually going to go into the training. So, this is a little weird because this video is going to be in chronological chronological order going from meal one, two, three, four. But my training was actually the first thing I did in the day. I trained at 2 p.m. That was like the start of my day. I actually woke up at nine and then I usually I wake up, I'll have like a coffee and then I'll just spend the entire morning working as that is when I'm most efficient, most productive, you know, just like business stuff, emails, coaching, working on my actual program, which is set to launch in about 32 days, if I remember correctly. If you guys want to learn more, link in the description box below, then I'll go to the gym. And then after the gym, you know, that post uh, workout anabolic window coincidentally around the same time my hunger starts to uh, my hunger level start to rise that is usually when I have my first meal of the day it's usually anywhere from 2 to 5 p.m. but that I'm actually going to talk about at the end of the video because that's a whole separate thing I wanted to I wanted to mention this is probably one of the I gotta be honest one of the hardest and most interesting workouts I have ever done it was it's a special video guys stay tuned but in the meantime let's jump into the full day of eating starting with five o'clock so that is massive. That's five plus three. It's eight hours of fasting. And I mean, like, usually, very rarely will I eat past midnight. I just, like, by then I'm already going to sleep, so it doesn't matter. Which means that at the very most, my actual feeding window today, pretty much seven hours. Realistically, it's going to be, like, as low as five or six, which is friggin' crazy. But that means that the meals I do eat, probably, like, two meals and then a few snacks here or there, they're going to be freaking good. They're going to be like, you know, it's not going to be like, no, I'm having an almond and then half an apple. And then maybe later I'll go chew on some ice and, you know, smell a Snickers. Although this one is actually pretty damn low calorie. This is probably my favorite thing in like my favorite fast food go to. It's called Fast and Fresh. And it's just, it really is just pretty much like a really clean kind of uh, sandwich or panini. It's kind of grilled, you know, they put like one of those, like one of those grill presses on. I don't know. It tastes friggin' Amazing. It's a really good combination of like, it's, it's healthy, but also tastes pretty damn good. And then on the side, instead of like the usual fries or chips or some other bullshit, they just give you a, a salad and that's balsamic vinegar. So the dressing is actually very low in fat. One of the problems when you have a salad as a side dish, you know, like when you're at a fast food place, it's like, mm, healthy, I'll have a salad. And then it turns out to be like 450 calories because it's got more fat than a Big Mac because of all the friggin' ranch and shit and bacon crisp and all that crap. It pretty much, it's like, oh, I'm having a healthy low calorie salad. Bullshit. That is not the case here. This thing comes out to around like 600 calories at the absolute most. High protein, high carb, a little bit of fat, friggin' awesome. And yeah, you guys probably don't have this in your city if you're watching this all over the world. But the point is like when you go to the mall and you're at a fast food court, there's so many options. You don't have to immediately go to the McDonald's, go to the Subway because it's like, oh, Subway, eat fresh, you know, and clean. Meanwhile, it's like 1,200 calories. You can always find one place, which is going to be a nice compromise between tasting good. This isn't like 10 out of 10, I'll be honest. Obviously, I'd rather have like three Big Macs, but it's a pretty good compromise and still low calorie, healthy. And yeah, we're going to have this and then I'm going to get some more work done. In the meantime, I'm watching... Surprise, surprise, I'm watching Infinity War for like the third time. Honestly, guys, it was so fucking good. Oh, and also, by the way, I'm also having a Kit Kat because, you know, I gotta treat myself. Also, fun fact, guys, out of all the chocolate bars out there, you know, Twix, Snickers, Mars, all that good stuff. In my opinion, Kit Kat's actually the best because it's only two, 200 calories. The rest of them are like 250, like a Mr. Big Bar is like 290. It's not nothing. It is... It is significant. And when you're trying to really maximize your calorie deficit, those 90 calories, they can make a big deal. Also, guys, sprint training. Now, this obviously does affect your body composition, so I had to throw in a little bit of footage to this. I don't want to talk about this too much, but as you guys know, I've talked in the previous few months how I've been falling in love with sprint training, not just from a fat loss, cardio, calorie burning standpoint, but more so from an overall general health and performance standpoint. I don't want to be that massive bodybuilder who can like bench press 350 pounds, but he can't run like a kilometer without throwing up and collapsing. No, fuck that shit. Today, we are doing two 200 meters which is half a lap and we were doing two sets of three reps each rep meaning 200 meters so I would run that take a break for around 60 seconds 
do that again three times, then take a big break for around five, six, seven minutes, and then repeat this whole process one more time. It came out to around 120 calories burnt, according to my fitness pal. But to be honest, this is probably a gross under exaggeration. So what I actually do is I go into my fitness pal, I put in like the fastest uh, I could find, and then I put in however long I did. Now, usually it takes me around 30, give or take seconds to run the 200 meters. So if I did that six times, that's around three minutes, and it comes out to around 100. 20 calories burned not a lot but definitely not nothing and i definitely do factor that in because hey that almost burnt off that kit kat bar i had all right guys next meal of the day it's around 7 42 so it's been a few hours since i last ate this one i want to keep nice uh nice and simple we are doing chicken thighs so i actually keep like i would literally buy like meat, like chicken breasts, steaks, thighs, and I'll buy like massive packs of them. Cause it's like, you can actually get them for cheaper when you buy them. They call them like club packs. So you can get like three pounds of meat. Then what I do is I get like, like I get like a hundred pack of these Ziploc bags and I'll kind of split them up into servings. So in this case, it's usually like three chicken thighs, one chicken breast. That way it's just a lot simpler. You grab it, you go, or you can actually freeze them. And instead of freezing the whole thing, you can kind of freeze individual servings. And then that day, if you need to defrost something, instead of defrosting everything, you just take one of these out or two of these out, throw it in the sink, put it under some cold water or something for like an hour. And yeah, simple and easy. So we're gonna do that. That's gonna be our protein source. In addition to protein, there's a little bit of fat in there. It's not the end of the world. I think a lot of people are so terrified. They just eat like bodybuilders are just like chicken breast. That's it. It's like chicken breast, chicken breast, chicken breast all day, every day. And then occasionally they'll have like some boring fish like tilapia or some super lean steak. Not the good steak, like that boring one, like eye of round steak, the one that tastes like a, like a hockey puck or something. It tastes like crap. You know, it's not the end of the world if you want to go outside of your spectrum a little bit. Chicken thighs are totally fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They have a slightly higher amount of fat, but it's not the end of the world. As long as you factor that into your macros, then it's completely okay. So you don't always have to like limit yourself to this dogma of just eating chicken breast because I saw every other bodybuilder do it. No, you don't have to do that crap. Again, flexible dieting, eat whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Vegetable source, we're just having some asparagus, nice and simple. We're gonna pop this in the oven for like 10, 12 minutes. I got a little bit of olive, uh, olive oil under there just so that it doesn't stick to the pan. And then I throw some vegetable seasoning on there, just makes it taste a little bit nicer. Also guys, by the way, I am probably gonna use a little bit of olive oil like spray on here, and yes, I do count that. That's how serious I am. To be honest, that's probably taking it a little bit too far. You probably don't have to do that considering it's four calories. Oh my God. But you know, watch out guys, oh, two of those, that's 10 calories, oh shit. Next up, we got our snack. I am trying to be a little bit healthier because I had that chocolate bar earlier, so I'm like, you know, Sometimes I can have a little bit of crap, you know, chocolate bar. Yesterday my snack was literally just like a handful of chips. But today I'm taking it a nice, uh, nice and simple. We're just having, this is a peach. That's an apple. That's it. This is a peach. Bit, bit. Cannibalism. <gasps> you can have a little bit. Does she like it or is she gonna spit it out like every other vegetable I give her? And it's on. Okay. <laughs> I sacrificed that for you. And that's it guys, macros are All right guys, last meal of the day. This one I love because it's just so simple and so quick and easy to make. Keyword is make, not cook, because there really isn't much cooking involved at all. This is a Stouffer's Fit Bowl. I think that's what they're called. I can't really remember off the top of my head right now. They're kind of like one of those frozen, uh, frozen meals you can buy. And it's funny, it says on the front like high protein. And I think it's like 23 grams of protein, which, which isn't that high. I guess for the average person is like, whoa, slow down there, Ronnie Coleman, bodybuilder extraordinaire. But for us in the actual fitness industry, it's not that much, but it's still nice. On the side, I actually made a bit of lean steak to add uh, to this meal. I kind of mix it all together and increase the actual protein intake. This is an eye of round steak, which coincidentally is the steak that I trash talked like two minutes ago in this video. So <laughs> I guess it kind of came back to bite me in the ass. And on the side, just to increase my protein and fiber intake, I'm having a Quest Bar. I, to be honest, I do not like the taste of these. I'm just sick of that like fibery xylitol artificial sweetener taste. But the macros are fantastic. I mean, it is high in protein and it's very high in fiber as well. Oh, also guys, one more thing. Right before bed, I also had a peach. This is just a little, you know, a little something to curb my appetite because I was kind of craving something sweet. Anyway, the calories and macros for this meal are... So guys, these are my final macro and calorie totals for the end of the day. Now looking at this, uh, before I was about to go to bed, I thought, you know what, it's it's not bad, but it's it's not great. There are a few 
there's one actual problem which I need to remedy and I need to fix. Carbs are a little high, but that's okay because the fat came out to be a little bit lower, which kind of offsets carbs. Again, I think that carbs and fat are relatively, relatively being the keyword, um, interchangeable. Also, I did some cardio, which also kind of kind of cancels out uh, that slightly higher carb intake. The issue was protein, which came out to be 170 grams. For me, weighing around like the low 180s right now, maybe 179 pounds. I mean, that's not even one gram of protein per pound of body weight, which when I'm cutting, not when I'm bulking, but when I'm cutting and muscle preservation is a little bit more at risk, that is something which I try to at least hit. So what I did to fix this is simply take one scoop of protein, you know, right before bed. All I did is take that, mix it with around 500 milliliters of cold water. I think this was around 30 grams of the actual protein powder. I use my protein's impact weight isolate, salted caramel flavor, and that comes out to around 24, around 24 or 25 grams of protein. And that's it guys, these are the macros after I make that one little fix, and they look a lot better. My calories are slightly over, but I always allow myself a reasonable error margin. Protein's good, fat's a little bit under, uh, carbohydrates are a little bit over, but again, it's offset by the cardio. Overall, pretty good end of the day, and uh, yeah, guys, this is an example of a full day of eating. Welcome to my life, guys. I pretty much do this every day. Okay, guys, the last part of this video, this was a workout. Now, this, it kind of started off as a normal day, and it kind of evolved into something which was very different than what I had anticipated, and that's why I wanted to include it in this video, because it was fucking awesome, and it's something which also, it kind of taught me a lesson. Like, I know that sometimes I hear people try to, like, really, like, you know, make their workout seem more awesome than they actually are, but this actually was the case for once. This doesn't happen very often. Like, I only have a few of these workouts every year, but when I do, if I can get it on camera, it's pretty fucking awesome. And I wanna, I wanna tell you guys about it because it's, it's almost like a psychological battle as much as it is a physical battle. That might not make sense, but I'll explain. So I walked in the gym, and I haven't, I haven't been very strong lately because again, I'm, like as you guys saw in this video, I'm in a slight calorie deficit right now. I'm cutting just a little bit more. Like nobody wants to click on a thumbnail of some guy telling you how to lift and how to exercise and look good and aesthetic when he himself is at like 20% body fat and has a bad case of fat face. You know, let's cut the crap. Let's be honest. My strength is starting to take a hit. It's not like it's dramatically cut down by like 30% like I am when I'm on competition day, but it's it's not rising, you know, to say the least. And I'm probably down a solid 10, maybe 15%. And the fact that that's happened, very to a small extent, it kind of pissed me right the fuck off. So I went in the gym and what you guys are seeing right now is, I haven't done this in a while. I am doing heavy uh, bench. I'm doing 275, which is the heaviest that I have gone in in months. I've been doing a lot of incline bench press, and even then, I usually stay in the 2 to 240, 230 range. So for me to put up 275, two and a half plates, and start pounding out sets of three, it was pretty intense. And what I actually decided I was going to do is I'm going to, you know what, Igor? Try to go for, let's do four. Four sets of three reps, kind of like, you know, a back, you know, to my powerlifting style of training, which I usually do at my heaviest and biggest, usually in the winter and fall. And uh, I said, I'm going to fucking keep on going until, until I'm, I'm out. And at four sets, which is hopefully what you guys are seeing on screen right now, because I'm kind of recording this and then editing it later. So either way, it was fucking hard. I set four and set five. And I told myself, all right, this is hard, but I'm going to try to do one more. And, uh, you know, luckily, you know, the gym that I'm at right now, it's pretty advanced, so it's got like a really good bench press with safety bars. So even if I did just completely drop it on myself, I would be okay. Fifth set, fourth set, it was, it was kind of heavy. You guys can see the actual bar speed. That's usually how I dictate how heavy a set is and how much more I have left in the tank. And should I actually try another set? Should I get a spotter? Things like that. How slow was the bar speed? How much more, you guys ever do a bench and then your arms are kind of like, like fucking shaking you're literally like about to collapse or something it's like you feel you know suddenly you go from feeling like rock steady to like feeling like a fucking twizzler under it yeah it's it's not a great feeling but it actually is a great feeling because that me that's when you know you are training your hardest that's when you know that you're not training at like 70 mm, percent capacity no that's when you know you've left the gym and you've literally given it your all because you know that if any if you try to give it any more you'd probably fucking drop it on yourself and i kept on chasing that this workout but the awesome thing is it never actually happened. As you guys are seeing on screen, like, I mean, set five, six, seven, every time I thought, that's it, I got nothing more in the tank, I can't do any more. 
somehow the next set, and I'm only doing two minutes of recovery time, two to three, maybe a little bit later into the actual workout. Every time I thought I don't have any more left in the tank and somehow the next set I would barely muster it out. That last third rep would always take like three seconds for me to actually lock it out and I always told myself, all right, one more set, Igor, just one more, just one more. And the crazy fucking thing is what I thought I couldn't keep on doing at set four. I thought that's it, maybe one more set, set five and I'm done. You know, this is too heavy, I've been cutting. No, because that's all just mental bullshit. It kind of reminded me what it's like to train truly at 100%. Not saying that for the camera, for Instagram, but in reality, it's like, ooh, it's, you know, ooh, it hurts a little. Oh, it's getting a little sore. I'm done. It's getting, my elbows are wobbling. I don't know, nine might be pushing it. Fuck. This is getting, this is getting really heavy. It's like, it's just everything is like wobbling and like shaking and this is like the definition of heavy. All right guys, final set, 10th set, 275, three reps. If you've seen this footage, then it means I finished the workout and it didn't die, so that's good. But uh, do I actually finish it? Do I complete the reps? That will, we're about to find out. By the way, guys, it's kind of cool. I just saw this now. As I was doing this lift, there's a girl at the bottom right hand of the screen, and she she kind of gets up as she sees me from across the room struggling with this weight. She actually sits back down the second I lock it out. So I'm pretty sure she was willing to like jump across the room as my guardian angel to save you know the bar uh, from cutting my head off. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. So shout out to her. I really appreciate that. It's really nice to see people doing you know good things for one another, especially in the fitness and lifting community. And I would have had like no idea that this even happened if I didn't review this footage like multiple days after the actual workout. So, so yeah, to whoever that is, I don't know her name or anything, but you know, big thank you to her. This is one thing I want to show you guys. I don't want to explain. And what better way than a graph? Because you guys know on my channel, if it's a vlog, there's some kind of graph, there's some kind of math going into it. So think of it this way. If you watch my channel, like even relatively consistently, you have probably heard me talk about something called the law of diminishing returns. There is another law of diminishing returns. And I experienced that this workout and this reminded me why I fucking love working out. And I want to, I want to let you guys know about this in case some of you, you know, you don't know this or in case maybe you do, but you've forgotten. Let me motivate you again, because this is fucking awesome. It definitely motivated me. So on this side, you have F, and I'm gonna call this fatigue. Essentially, this could be physical fatigue, this could be mental fatigue, whatever it is you are doing, it is kicking your ass, and it is getting harder over time, obviously. Like, this would be 100. At 100, you're done. Like, I could put a gun to your head and tell you to keep going, you can't do it. You can't study anymore, you can't work out anymore, you can't run anymore, whatever it is, you are done. Here is like 50 or something, and here is zero. This is you're not, you know, this is you kind of like half-assing it. You, you're, you're just getting started. Uh, this is you literally, you haven't even started. And then over here, we're going to put work. Now, in my case, this was sets. Obviously, I went all the way to 10 sets. I was doing 10 sets of 275 pounds, uh, three reps each. And then, you know, you can go down, you can do whatever. Here's one, two, three, all these different sets. But this can be anything. You know, work can be, you know, it, how much you study, how much you work for your job, how much you work. Even, this could even be how much you work on your relationship. Whatever it is you are working on, whatever skill or, you know, career or anything physical, mental, I don't care. Whatever it is you're trying to work on and cultivate, it's going to require some effort. And that's going to unfortunately cause you some fatigue. This is a similar pattern that I noticed. I got tired very quickly. And somewhere around sets three, four, five, probably somewhere like four to five, this is where I noticed that my fatigue, it was pretty high. That's a shitty line. My fatigue was at like 90, 80 or something. And I thought, shit, if I can get to this level of fatigue this quickly, I can maybe do like what, six? Like maybe one more. 
but I can't do any more. I'm gonna, my, my fatigue is going to max out. And the crazy thing that I learned, or, you know, I always knew this, but I guess I remembered, it was reminding me today, is that the human body is a lot more resilient than you give it credit for. The human spirit, whatever you want to call it, your ability to bust your fucking ass, it's a lot, you, you can go for a lot longer than you give it credit for. If you want it enough, if you keep on going, if you have the mental fortitude, if you have the balls to keep going and pushing for that one more set, that eight set, that nine set, whatever it is that you may be doing, your body, it's going to fatigue, yeah, but it's never actually going to get there. It's like, if this is a hundred, you get so fucking close. I mean, like, look how close you actually are. Like, you have... I mean, this is like 95%, that's 100%. You are so close, but you never, it's gonna take you a long time to get there. I mean, maybe eventually somewhere it would, because I fucking did it. I got all the way to set 10, and I couldn't believe it. What I thought I was done on set four, five, six, I fucking pushed it all the way to set 10. That is fucking awesome. And so that's why I love this workout so much. Not even from a physical standpoint, I mean, yes, it is good, because this is a pretty decent bench press weight. I mean, I was doing 295 for 10 sets of three at my strongest and heaviest. So to be able to still do that now, having come down like 10, 12 pounds, definitely at a relatively leaner body fat percentage, not shredded, not competition level, but to be relatively lean and still putting up weight, like what, like 95% of what I'm capable of? And I know that once I actually start eating again, once I'm bulking in October, I'll get it back like that and then shoot up and then some and then go on to doing like, maybe I'll do this weight for 315, which would be fucking crazy. I guess like this is, this is kind of stupid, but I, I kind of have this mental image in my mind. I want to, I want to, this is the last thing I want to get across to you guys in this video because it motivated me and hopefully it'll motivate you. You know, like a, a tube of toothpaste. We all do this. We all use it in the beginning. And then at the end of it, it's kind of like this weird flattened out thing. And then you're like, oh shit, I gotta go to the grocery store and I gotta buy some more. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit. So you squeeze it out. You like roll it up and you squeeze it out. And then of course, if you're anything like me and you have shitty memory, you forget to do it. You're at the grocery store, you buy everything that you could possibly get. And then you come home and you're like, oh shit, you know, all right, I'll get it tomorrow. Tonight and tomorrow morning, I'll just squeeze out a little bit more. And you keep on doing this because if you're like me and your memory shit, you're gonna be doing this for four days. But just when you think you're done, you get a little bit more out. It was, you know, it looks like it's done, but you can always squeeze a little bit more out. And if you need it, because you're doing something you love, like in my case, you know, uh, this heavy workout at the gym or uh, trying to avoid uh, nasty breath, then yeah, you are gonna get a little bit more out of that tube of toothpaste, and that's a metaphor for your life. You're gonna get a little bit more out of your body. You're gonna get a little bit more hard work out of your brain, out of your soul, your spirit, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. I'm not into that hippy dippy shit, but for, for this video, maybe just for a little bit, maybe just a little bit, I am. Your body and your mind, it is capable of so much more if you ask of it. Now, don't ask like a ton. I'm not saying, all right, on set 10, all right, Igor, now you're going to bench press 315 for 10 reps, something you've never done before because then you just drop it and kill yourself. But if you ask a little bit more, just like one more percent, one more set, one more rep, one more hour in the gym, one more hour studying for that exam or working for that project at your job, one little bit more, one more percent effort, you can do it. You're capable of a lot more than you give yourself credit for. I forgot that. This workout reminded me, and uh, that's what I wanted to include in this video. That's why this video is probably going to be fucking 30 minutes long with a, with a long ass motivational rant, but I don't do this very often, so give me a break. I was due, I was overdue for my biannual motivational rant. That was a lot of talking. Either way, guys, sorry, this video is really long, but uh, it, it was pretty fucking cool. It was a good day. Like, I mean, the, the diet was fine, but this training session was badass. This actually took place a couple days ago, and I'm so excited. I think I might go back in the gym. I'm really fucking, like, antsy to get back in the gym and try this again, maybe with a little bit more weight. Maybe try 280, 285, because... You know, I definitely surprised myself with this kind of depleted, low, lower carbohydrate, somewhat lower calorie physique to still be capable of that. And now if I've got a taste for it, I want to see what more I can do. And I want to, I want to push my limits a little bit harder. That's why I love bodybuilding, guys. That's why I love bodybuilding strength training. It's not to, you know, get on stage and, you know, fucking speedo or, or whatever and pose with like 20 other guys. It's not to compare yourself to others. It's to compare yourself to your, to your older self, to be able to do what last week, last year, last month, whatever, what you couldn't do back then. Because that literally means that you are a different person 
you know, body composition, mental fortitude, whatever, you are a different and hopefully improved person than you were a day ago, a week ago, a year ago. I don't care. If I'm improving, I'm feeling good. And uh, yeah, either way, guys, sorry for the rant. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you in that next video. Hadouken! Thank you.